Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today looking at some more of the personality characteristics and really ramifications of the covert narcissist. Now the covert narcissist generally is um, the sort of narcissist that really kind of lays under the radar. They're very uh, generally very gentle, soft-spoken, kind of apathetic, meaning, you know, they're very easygoing. They don't really care one way or another how things are. They're very apt to let other people take the control. They're very apt to let other people take charge. Um, usually they do not vocalize a lot of opposition to things. They just kind of go along with the flow. But one of the issues, though, really, where it becomes very abusive, frustrating, and a real hindrance in a relationship is really, you know, what I would call the floundering and apathy that occurs with a um, with a covert narcissist. In other words, it, it appears that they're fulfilling all their responsibilities. You know, from an outward look at things, it might seem as though you know things are uh, you know as they should be and in order, and you know, um, yet you know, you find that certain things aren't taken care of and, you know, they might make the complaint that they're, you know, going to get around to it or they're, pull, you know, pushed too thin. However, what, what happens, though, is that in their apathy, which means they're not really caring, um, it's kind of like a sort of laziness where it's not even laziness for the self of, uh, sake of relaxing. <laughs> it's more like a laziness for just the oversight and neglect and letting things slide and letting things fall through the cracks that is so detrimental. And it really can impact really the uh, sort of cohesiveness of a relationship. Uh, it can impact things all around in terms of the quality of life together, the finances together, uh, certain things that you have entrusted to them can oftentimes be broken. So what's very dangerous and very disruptive in the covert narcissist relationship is really um, because of their apathy or lack of action, it really becomes a violation of trust. In other words, a, a trust that you had confided in them, you had placed with them, you had entrusted them with certain responsibilities or certain, um, you know, just keeping up their end of the bargain. Maybe some things were spoken, maybe things were not spoken, maybe assumed or just kind of like general, generally thought that, you know, you as the spouse would take care of. And they just seem to let a lot of these things lapse and go um, unresolved or untaken care of. And what becomes very detrimental is that it can cause a relationship to really suffer. And suffer in a lot of very um, irreparable ways. In other words, very hard to repair um, a lot of the damage that can be done, uh, that has been done because of a lack of sort of keeping things up to status quo, up to, up to par. And it can become extremely stressful for uh, the other, from the other, you know, the better half of the relationship because um, you know of the it's almost like double work that is required and you have to constantly follow up or make sure that things are done and you know you think things are done and they just seem to let things go but meanwhile the um, covert narcissist has all things really in order for them you know everything seems to be good on their end they're happy they're satisfied their insurance is taken care of, uh, their bills or whatever their obligations are taken care of, yet they seem to leave a certain gaps and holes that their significant other can fall into and, you know, leave them really sort of vulnerable. So it can be very uh, detrimental and, and devastating to deal with and really a finite, you know, emotionally burdensome as well. So if this is your situation, you know, definitely look at ways and means that you can become autonomous, meaning basically on your own a little bit, have things like accounts in your name, insurances in your name, uh, certain you know employment situations of your own where maybe the narcissist doesn't have all the information or you have kind of like a life that can flourish a little bit better there. 
um, have things like groups of your own where you can go off with your own friends and kind of operate at more of a upbeat level and you're not feeling so stressed and other people there are kind of have their life together and you're not feeling you know so um, weighed down by them you know the other thing with the covert narcissist is you know um, a lot of energy is you you know is utilized to try to get them to change and you know try to forgo a lot of that and you know just accept that you know this is how they are and you can either do one of a couple things you know you can decide to stay in the relationship and cope with it and deal with it and manage the best you can and try to really spearhead as many of areas of your life as you can and I don't want to say without them but really so that you're you know in charge of certain things the executor of certain things, um, the owner of certain things, the point of contact for certain important things. All these can help alleviate it because if you leave too much left to the covert narcissist, you know, you're going to find yourself maybe with a short end of the stick when you didn't want it or expect it. Um, and also look at, you know, if, if it's so severe um, where, you know, so much of what you need is not being met, definitely look at ways of going no contact or moving forward in your life. I know this is difficult for a lot of people. However, sometimes that can be the best saving grace for you. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos and discussions help. Please share, please subscribe for more great tools, videos, and discussions.